Hey Beer and Brew fans and welcome to Something About Beer. My wife has had to go into work today. <laughs> Cockrell agrees that's not very nice. But on a more positive note, it's Brew Day. <laughs> and we're making a chocolate stout today. Yum. So let's get into it. Kicking off the brew day with some geeky sciencey stuff. So uh, getting my water chemistry uh, ready, checking the pH of the uh, base water to make sure that that's accurate. Getting a few tools uh, ready for, for the day. So yeah, looking forward to this one. Water chemistry is complete. I'm heating up my uh, my mash water now, um, so that shouldn't take too long. Aiming for a 75.5 um, target today in my mash water. Um, and while that's heating up, I will now uh, crush the grains. So here's the grist, all crushed and ready to go. We have four and a half kilos of Munton's Planet Pale Ale, and we have 900 grams of uh, chocolate malt. We have 500 grams of uh, Dingerman's Biscuit Malt. We have uh, 200 grams of chip malt to help with the body and the head retention, hopefully. And then of course, as it's a stout, I'd put 50 grams there of roasted barley as well. So it's time to mash in now, and uh, it's a typical mash process. Pour it in at stages and mix as you go. And uh, yeah, try and make sure that I don't get any dough balls. It's smelling amazing actually. That chocolate malt. Uh, <laughs> Wow, yeah, that's really smelling nice and chocolatey and coffee, roasty. It's, uh, it's lovely. Now, smell the biscuit malt going in now as well. That's starting to give it a lovely biscuity, slightly sweet aroma as I'm mashing in here as well. Mixed with the chocolate and the, the sort of coffee notes um, is really... Uh, is really starting to to smell lovely. I'm going for quite a high mash uh, temperature today, 70 degrees C. Uh, I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Probably about 158, maybe. Guessing something like that. Because um, I want some of those uh, unfermentable dextrins to remain in the beer to help with the body and the sweetness. Um, which hopefully will really, uh, really promote some of the chocolate flavour in uh, in the beer as well. Of course, I'm recirculating now. Uh, take a peek at the colour of the, uh, the wood there, nice and dark, chocolatey colour. 
So yeah, I'll leave that now for an hour. Checking the mash pH. Look at the color of that wood. That looks lovely. And uh, we are aiming for 5.4. Um, yeah, we're a little low, but uh, still within uh, acceptable parameters, so I think we're good. So uh, my mash is doing okay. pH looks uh, looks pretty good. Um, sat here sort of contemplating the rest of the brew day, etc. Having a having a cup of tea, nice brew in my escape uh, brew house, uh, brew and brewery uh, beer mug here that I uh, picked up. Um, when I visited their brewery a few years ago in Redlands, California. Nice place, by the way. If you ever get a chance to uh, to be around that area, go and check them out. They're, uh, they're really good. Um, and uh, I was thinking about my uh, uh, my mash efficiency. Um, over the last 10 brews or so, since I've been crushing my own grain, um, my mash efficiency has been really good, you know, up into the 80s. Um, I'm using... Well, the majority, probably 90% 90, 90 of the grain that I'm using uh, in today's brew is actually pre-crushed. It was uh, um, basically part of the prize that I won for, uh, for a gold medal uh, at a brew uh, competition. So uh, I thought I'd, uh, you know, use that up. So I'm expecting my mash efficiency to, uh, to take a bit of a dive, um, but we'll see. Maybe I'm uh, surprised, but uh, yeah, so far so good. Um, everything seems to be going okay so far. Now I've said that, uh, I've probably jinxed it, but uh, let's see anyway. So it's now time to weigh out the hops. We're using Target hops today in this. Um, good old British variety. Um, not a lot though, 20 grams at uh, 60 minutes and 10 grams at 15 minutes. Usually uh, in a in a stout, certainly a, um, a British stout or Irish stout uh, as well, you don't really want a lot of hop character. Uh, American stouts are different, of course. Uh, they're very different. But uh, in, a, in a British or Irish stout, um, yeah, your hop, uh, it's definitely not a hop forward beer. So um, that's why we're using just a few. Uh, but hopefully we'll bring some bitterness to uh, counteract some of the sweetness that we're going to get from the beer. So, uh, yeah, a pretty easy hop uh, schedule today. All right, it's time for sparging now. Um, nothing really exciting here, just a, a typical uh, batch sparge into the, uh, into the kettle here, over the grains. Pretty dull, really. One of the things I do try to ensure though in my uh, in my sparge is to make sure that I get uh, all the way around the sides as well as in the middle of the uh, of the grist there just to make sure that uh, I'm, I'm rinsing as much of those uh, sugars as possible. Um, so I do take a little bit of care uh, when I'm uh, when I'm sparging even though it's a, a pretty dull uh, process to be honest. Almost at the boil. Gotta watch that hot break. <clears throat> Keep an eye on that. Get down. Good on. It's a bit of persistent today. I think we'll be okay though. Once we start getting rolling, we'll be fine. Getting close though. So in with the first top edition, 20 grams of target. Second and final hop charge now going in, 10 grams of target uh, at 15 minutes and a uh, Irish Moss tablet. So there's about 10 minutes left uh, in the boil and it's time to put the uh, lactose in. There's 300 grams here. Um, that's a bit warm. Um, 
while uh, while we've got a, a fairly vigorous boil going on i like to drop it in uh, with about 10 minutes left um, the uh, the reason i do that is so that uh, we can get it uh, displaced really well in the um, in the beer or in the wort so that it doesn't sit on the uh, bottom and scorch um, i also give it a little bit of a stir as well just to try and uh, amalgamate it as best i can Okay, so boil is finished now. I'm recirculating and chilling, so uh, it should chill down pretty quick. Yeah, it, this double chiller I made does uh, does chill uh, chill the wood down really quick. Actually, I'm very pleased with it. We'll get this chilled down, and then we'll move on to the uh, transfer. So that's chilling and finished now. Uh, I'm now transferring to my fermenter. The wort is looking very uh, chocolatey. Um, also pretty clear actually, so I'm quite pleased with that. <clears throat> Going in nicely there. So the only thing left to do after this, of course, is to pitch the yeast. So there we are. The yeast is pitched. I've set up my keg for uh, purging with CO2 from the uh, fermentation and um, yeah now we we be patient and we wait so brew day's over um, no uh, no issues no uh, major mess ups or anything like that disasters um, I uh, I did uh, almost spill my um, boiling hot tea in my lap and scald my plums, but uh, but uh, luckily that was off camera, so I didn't have to uh, use the bleeper machine. Um, but nothing with the brew day, nothing with the brew day, uh, thankfully. Um, so looking at the uh, end of brew day stats uh, for my chocolate stout, um, the pH was okay, uh, slightly lower than anticipated at 5.33. Uh, rather than 5.4, no, no issue with that. Very happy with that. Um, the the mash um, and the boil volumes and uh, uh, and stats were were pretty good. Uh, slightly low on the uh, fermenter volume. Um, we were looking up just short of 23 liters, and I got 22 and a half. So slightly down on that. Um, but what has surprised me again is my mash efficiency actually. Um, I'm at 85%, so uh, that's very, very surprising given that I was using uh, already uh, crushed grain. And usually when I used uh, crushed grain uh, that I don't crush myself, you know, that, uh, that I bought to already crush, then my mash efficiency takes a little bit of a dip. Now, I did add some um, lactose into the brew. Now, I don't know if the mash efficiency takes that into account or not um, maybe I should do some research and, and check that out uh, but if anybody watching the video knows whether that uh, um, you know affects the mash um, efficiency in brew father um, then just drop us a note uh, send us a comment I'd uh, appreciate that so the beer is now put to bed and waiting to ferment so now I just have to be patient of course so yeah all in all a pretty uh, uh, successful brew day so uh, I think it's now time for a beer. So uh, the only thing left to say, of course, is thanks for tuning in and until next time, cheers. If you like what we're doing here at Something About Beer, please subscribe and give the video a like. It really does help the channel out a lot. And don't forget to ring that bell so that you're alerted to new content we put out.